you guys need any cards, packs, sleeves, anything of that nature, shop on TCG Player using my affiliate link in the description. What's good, YouTube? Last night, me and the boys got together, decided to play a little 4v4 in one of our discords. Obviously, this was no ordinary 4v4, though, because ours was absolutely stacked with Edison format champions. We had Fitz in there, we had Lord Voldemort, we had Ghost Rider. I mean, I was there, but I don't really count, right? Uh, I decided to bring the Dark Creator Turbo Neospatian pile I've been showcasing on the channel. Um, previous versions of the deck that I've shown have been on Quick Draw, but I've also been privately developing this, like, no Quick Draw version that's kind of just adapted onto my Junk Synchron Neospatian build. I think I played this build a bunch on my members only stream a couple days ago, so we got in some good games there. I do not hate the Quick Draw version. I definitely think it does a lot of cool things, but. I kind of prefer just having trap cards as to playing this all-in turbo strategy. We're on only two dark creators with one Sork, one Dad. These are the big boss monsters. Essentially, the concept is dark creator is taking the spot of something like a Samorg, um, whereas, you know, this card is just better, right? <laughs> like, dark Samorg and, and whatever, you know, frost and flame dragon cursed stuff I've experimented with in the past. They're just really mediocre boss monsters. Dark creator is actually a pretty serious threat that could just, like, go plus one every turn. It's a really big body with 3k, um, just a very good card. Uh, so we were on triple Raikou. Obviously, we weren't playing this in the quick draw version either. It gives us actual outs to stuff. Uh, if we have to deal with an oppression or a, a fossil dino or whatever, so that's pretty good. It also goes well with the Junk Synchron. But overall, I think this build is very good. I think this build, I've been playing it all day. It's been testing really well, uh, and it... Obviously, you're going to see I'm pretty pleased with how it performed in the 8-man, or 8-man, 4v4. Uh, it, it plays out kind of similar. The way it works is we just have everyone play all at once, and whoever wins their matches advances to the next round, and we keep going till one team is eliminated. So let's go look at the matches in order, starting off against Ghost Rider. <laughs> uh, shout out to Ghost Rider, by the way. Um, him and... Voldemort actually both have YouTube channels, so I think I'll I'll tag them both in the title or something. But Ghost Rider, uh, badass profile pick by the way. Uh, he decided to bring the bane of my existence. You already saw me play an entire match out against Dragon Turbo on ladder with this deck, and now I got to do it again. <laughs> uh, at least we won RPS. At least we won RPS. So here I think we do set the Raiko after we Gold Sark for the Convert Contact. I'm thinking we're probably going to keep Gold Sarks in. It felt like most games, the Gold Sark was actually pretty cracked. And I don't really want to take it out and play like Upstarts either, because this is an OTK deck for sure. Uh, so when I see the Sangan, I'm like, okay, he's not playing Dragon Turbo. <laughs> so I pop the Sangan, right? And then, turns out he is playing Dragon Turbo. Man's actually just playing Sangan in uh, Dragon Turbo. Fortunately for me, I mill like Cross Porter, which is actually really good, because we just get a random plus one here. Um, so very nice, but the opponent is going to start drawing cards, and we don't love that. We don't love that. They find Future Fusion. Now, we have hope here if they don't draw into maybe more gas, but they draw double rejuve. So, that's going to be end phase, drawing a bunch of cards. So, yeah, now we got a, now we got a lot to contend with. We put the Armageddon Knight out, obviously. That's, that's what we want to do. Get the other cross porter out of deck. Fill up the grave with darks. Add some pressure. So, I just go set the bottomless and hope that we don't get OTK'd. It's like pretty... It's pretty possible that we could get OTK'd. I, they would need to find... The one thing to keep in mind about the Ghost Rider's build is think that Heavy Storm is the only sweeper. So it would need to be like Heavy Storm plus double red med or like red med plus something else i'm not exactly sure so it's not super likely he just opts to go drag hit it over ghost rider is um one of the best dragon turbo players out there if not the best because of how patient like he is he will wait until like the absolute last moment to go for like his big push and i think that is uh one of the reasons he's the absolute goat at this deck so we're gonna get that convert contact finally 
Going to draw two. Um, we decide, oh, we find another convert contact. Very good. Now, I think we end up mind conning the um, the other one, the, the Bree Dragon, so that we can summon the Dolphin. I don't use the Dolphin effect, and I think there's probably not a reason to. So we just make Black Rose, knowing, of course, that they're going to double Reckless. Uh, so long as they don't find Gores exactly, then they're dead, I think, because we have five Darks exactly, which means we drop the Creator, we bring back just like anything. I think I just get Armageddon Knight because it's the biggest. Don't use the effect, drop Dad, drop, drop Sork, and now that's way over game. So we are just going to OTK from that point. Uh, so a very, a very interesting game number one there. We managed to pull it out. Uh, Man, the the creator dad lines just happened a lot in this uh, this series, and we're get, we have it again. Um, obviously, not a great opening hand though. Not many of our cards do a lot, but we find a lore which is helpful. We pick up an electric virus, which uh, you recall from I don't know, two days ago video. Uh, by the time this is uploaded, I was on electric viruses in the side deck in that matchup against Dragon Turbo as well because Drago like completely owns us. I don't know. Maybe I should just start siding this card, actually, in everything. I just, just like to hate on dragon players specifically. I'm not sure. So we see Ghost Rider also on a Lore of Darkness, which is an interesting one. Just playing, like, all the draw power. Like, all of it. Like, Reckless Greeds and a Lore. So, very cool. I'm gonna go for a Super Rejuve here, which um, is a big problem because they also have Magical Stone to add back the Super Rejuve. So they're just gonna be drawing, like, a bajillion cards. They also tributed one for the Prime Mat, so I think they, they end up discarding like five, and then they activate three Super Rejuves or something, so they just draw an 18. Draw an 18, which is the perfect amount. You don't want to go down to uh, two cards in deck here. You won't be able to resolve your Avarice's next turn, so I mean, pretty basic uh, stuff. So here where you go for the Convert, I mean, we needed a top deck here. Our hand was... Uh, was not going to do much to keep us from losing next turn, so we find Convert Contact, very lucky. We get Junk Synchro on DD Crow. Really nice pickups, really nice pickups. Because this lets us get Dad live, so we just summon a couple DDV targets, which means our DDV is live now, which means we could potentially respond to the opponent's play next turn to keep them off of Red Med. Unfortunately, they do draw the Heavy Storm for turn, which means I'm going to have to... I mean, there's a 1 in 3 chance, which means I'm going to have to uh, use it right away. Well, not even even better than 1 in 3 chances. I, I pretty much just assumed they had a Heavy Storm because they drew their whole deck. So we do just chain it. We hit the Debris Dragon. They still do have the Instant Fusion, naturally. But the thing, the saving grace for us is that we have the Crow to stop the Avarice, which means they can't go completely crazy on us. They can only really do like one play with Red Med, and then we just have guaranteed lethal next turn right this dark crater is live we have a lightning vortex we have electric virus we have lethal just like a thousand ways so i decide to yeah we just kill this way i don't know i didn't want to i didn't want to show the electric virus i didn't want ghost rider to feel like i was preying for him <laughs> so i i just like did it that way but yeah i mean it doesn't really matter we had we had like infinite ways to get game there right so we knew their hand uh we knew there was no gores so game over we take that one 2-0 uh definitely getting tired of playing against dragon turbo with his deck though so on to the next match up against lord voldemort i think he brought just the standard hero frog thing he's been playing for a while here this match we open up with gold sark for convert contact again uh definitely feel like we were sarking for contact a lot he opens up prodigy sub but then there's two dupe frogs in his hand so he just like cannot dupe lock i guess he could soft lock technically with like an attack mode dupe but it's not fantastic so he just opts to end on double swap bounce them both and then pass no no wait he normals the dupe and sets the regeki break i decided just set torrential pass i considered Going in with like a brain, you know, junk synchron, try to force out a discard trap to prevent me with sinking with the dupe, and then, you know, crash the dupe, <laughs> maybe drop trag, hit over swap frog. Like it was a play that I could have done, and then like set the torrential to make sure that I got to have this torrential set. Obviously, torrential very good against frogs, but I decided to just play it chill, and um, he regeki breaks the torrential, whatever. Kind of expected that. I don't drop Tragodia here because we want to use the Convert Contact, which is exactly what we're going to do. 
once our turn comes around, we find Dad. <laughs> god, Dad is so good in this deck. Oh my god. Uh, so we draw, we just find Raikou. So it's time to hope no Caius. If he does Caius, we can technically just bounce our own Raikou, drop Tragodia, and then um, we have this Compulse, and then we could steal the Dupe Frog out the Dupe Lock. Um, so it wouldn't be terrible. We do just kill one of the dupes with the Raikou, since there's no Caius coming down. And now, unfortunately, we got this really weird mill where we didn't hit a single dark, and we milled both our Raikous and a... <laughs> and a Grand Mole, which is just, like, cards we want to draw in this situation. So I think I do finally drop Tragodia here. Yeah, after taking, like, 4k damage to Swap Frog, I'm like, it's, it's it's time, it's time. So here we do go in with the Junk Synchron. We bring back the Raikou. We decide to Brain the Dupe, which I didn't need to do, but I wanted to start putting on some pressure. I think if we could force out the Gores here, we could drop Dad in main two and then try to find some line with Dark Creator later. So we can make the Stardust by changing Trag to level 3. And then we can drop Dad, pop both, set another back row. So we're feeling pretty good. Hopefully he Econs and tries to steal my Dad, um, which he does do. And then we can just put it back to our hand with Compulsory. So very nice play there for us. Opponent searches out a Malicious Edge. That's fine. They hit in. They kill our card, we top deck a very good draw, which is Foolish Burial. That's going to allow us to search a Neospatian Aqua Dolphin, which is going to allow us to put a third Dark back in our graveyard. Um, maybe I should have pitched the Gores. I feel like the Gores is probably not getting used. Um, well, either way, we just needed to pitch a Dark, because now we can look at the hand, rip the Battle Fader, inflict 500, summon Dad, pop the field, and just attack for game since we know the hand. So Aqua Dolphin just feeling very... Very illegal, violating the hand of the frog player. Uh, game number two, ah, this game was not good. I, I think I played pretty badly. Um, so we go in with the mole. He phoenix wings. He's going to add this back. That's fine. Uh, I think, so here he decides to play around gores, which is understandable. I figure we can like buy a lot of time if he's just playing around gores. So we just swing with mole. I don't want to set anything because I feel like this is uh, removal, which it actually is. So at this point, I probably should have just dropped Gores. Yeah, I think I probably should have just dropped Gores here. But instead, I decide to be like way too patient with the Gores. Um, we can pitch Dark Panther to start setting up our graveyard. I still don't want to set this because it'll turn on his Treeborn if he has a Regeki Break or whatever. And I really want to have this DDV be live because I feel like it's pretty good against Frogs to resolve this card. Uh, plus, getting Dark Panther to Grave means we can get to Dad sooner. So at this point, we do drop Gores, right? There's no reason. We definitely held it one too many attacks, though, I think. We took 1k more damage than we really needed to. Now, I do go Dolphin Priority here. I think I just wanted to do this so that I could get my Dad live. It doesn't really matter if we hit anything from his hand because we have this DDV. So now we can just space the back row, drop Dad, attack, set DDV. Uh, which is pretty good. Now, we know his entire hand here. But he goes for the Storm anyway on the Dad, which tells me he just has to have top-decked something. So I decide we're going to chain the DDV. And that hits does hit three cards out of his hand, which is very good. But we're down a lot right now. And we're in top-decking mode. We really need to find, like, contact into Creator or something. And we find contact, which is good. We draw two, but, I mean, it's just not going to do it, right? We maybe could have... No, no, no. We were just... We were dead. Because they had Caius. There was nothing we could do. Couldn't set a monster. Couldn't pass. We were dead. Game number three. I think we do Sark for Contact again here. Sarking for Contact a lot. <laughs> That's like... I think all three Sarks I've used so far has been for Contact. So they just summon Ocean Attack, thinking that it might be Raikou. Of course, it is Cross Porter this time. They go for the Sark. They take the Gores... Definitely a good argument for taking Gores. I think maybe should have taken this to keep me off contact, but it's a little iffy. Gores is definitely annoying for his hand to deal with. Usually I don't take Gores off of um, Trap Dust Shoot because it's just like not super scary if I know it's there, you know? So anyway, we're going to get that contact, draw two, Junk Synchron. That's going to make Dad live. We're actually not dropping Dad live yet. Um, actually, Dad is not live. Was there a way to get it? No, it was just live there. I just decided not to use it yet. Okay. My plan is to, like, Torrential when he goes for Caius on this, maybe, and then drop Creator and then drop Dad. Now we pick up Mask of Restrict, though, so that's very good. 
that is very good. Um, it's going to turn off a lot of their, a lot of the cards in their deck. So Caius useless, Econ's useless, etc. They go for Brain here to try and make Stardust, but we just torrential that obviously. Um, they can't tribute Stardust to use its effect because they're under mask, so they just get a search with Dupe Frog and pass their turn. Now we got five darks. Creator comes out. Banish one, summon another one. Now we got three darks. Drop dad. So the opponent is going to bring down the gores, obviously, here, not wanting to die. We hit over one. We banish a dark to kill the other one, and we pass. We're pretty much just worried about Miracle Fusion top deck at this point. Uh, we summon Dolphin, see their hand, rip the Caius. Unfortunately, we're under T-Roar, so we got to wait a turn. They draw Solex, which doesn't do anything because they're under Mask of Restrict. So they're just going to set a deep prison, and we have calculated that we have exact game if we summon Raikou, hit over this Treeborn. So no matter which one he deprisons, he is going to die here. Uh, so that was the match against Frogs. All right, final match. We are in finals at this point up against Oxymore, who's playing Vayu Turbo. Game one, we end up going second. Our hands it could be worse, it could be better. Uh, but the opponent, of course, insane. <laughs> well, pretty good hand, you know? Pretty good hand and then dust shoot, so, like, I guess insane. Uh, we have to just, like, Sark and hope that we last this long, I guess, is the plan. Uh, I could have used Trag to avoid taking some damage earlier, but I decided to just drop it here. Opponent sets suppression. We hit over. They Gardena. And I think they probably had a line to kill me here. Am I thinking about this wrong? Maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't. Uh, so they just summon Gale. They take a ton of damage, but uh, what do we get? We got to find, like, so much here. We drew into a dead dust shoot now. Um, we found another contact, so let's get drawing. We need to find, like, an out to the back row plus dark creator. And <laughs> we draw this, so I'm just like, all right, I guess we got to crash and, like, try to draw again and search a bit and hope we find something main too and hope they didn't draw their oppression so now we go for the dark creator but they do have their uh oppression so we just uh yeah we just lose that game one uh that was tough we got dust shooted and we had a kind of slow hand uh, and they had a pretty aggressive hand game two is going to be different though we set this porter pass they're just gonna hit in we get a dark panther so now we're gonna start resolving convert contact here Draw some cards, Rota, go Armageddon Knight, send. Uh, so obviously you can see where this game is going. Our graveyard is just fully set up already. We set Dust Tornado. Here they go for Dark Greffer. I decide not to crow this because even if we get DDV'd, which I think is unlikely since we have this Dust Tornado, but even if we do, we still just drop Crater and win, right? So it's like, doesn't matter. Okay, so they do just set the one, we dust it, now Creator comes down, we bring back Cross Porter, we use Cross Porter special out the Neospatian Grand Mole, which, uh, yeah, Cross Porter's got another effect, it turns out, it's pretty good, and then we set, 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 they've got the Gale, we're gonna bounce our own guy, so it's fine, they don't replay, we Raikou pop itself, we mill a Dark, so that puts us up to five Darks again, we summon back the Dark Creator, we hit in, and uh, yeah, this is just gonna be... Pretty much it, because we have the Crow to stop that. They're going to scoop it up, knowing that I have the Grand Mole in the hand. On to game number three. This one, I think this is the game where I played the worst in the whole series, and it's definitely going to show. So we definitely have a an interesting hand. I decided to just set the Typhoon, and uh, they're just swinging with these little guys. So I'm like, that's cool. That's cool. We could just wait. Um, maybe I should have mirrored these. I considered it. And we end up taking, like, hits for three turns in a row or something from them because I don't mirror ever. Uh, we draw Heavy Storm, which is like, okay. At some point, we could potentially use this. And we're still just taking a lot of damage. We draw the Creator. I'm like, all right, sooner or later, I got to find a monster. Uh, we do. We find a Raikou, so very nice. Opponent sets their Raikou. I Raikou their Raikou. And then we just hit for 200. So they go for the Vayu. We crow it. And then here's the turn where I think I really screwed up. I probably shouldn't have gone for this in the first place. We the, the play would be to just set Porter and then put this to defense and then Torrential when they make their move. Um, but, yeah, that's not what we do. Wait, what? Okay, okay, yeah. We flipped up to our Torrential. They flip up their Torrential to make our Porter mistiming, which is whatever. Uh, I don't know if that's optimal or not, but they did do that. So now we go for Contact. And um, here... Now that we're committed to this line, I probably should have just, like, stormed 
and then judgmented their judgment, and then gone in and forced out the Necrogardna with the dad and the, uh, the Armageddon Knight. But I don't do that. Instead, I just, like, summon Armageddon Knight and pass. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why, because now we just die to, like, anything, and yeah, we, uh, we, we lose the duel here, so, very confusing way that I played that turn, like I said, in hindsight, probably shouldn't have gone for it at all, probably should have just waited, and if we are gonna go for it, I should have committed to going for it, rather than just passing on an empty board and then losing the duel to one normal summon Armageddon Knight, so, yeah, I don't really know, I don't really know why I, why I, why I played that game that way, but yeah, it was painful to relive okay so those were the matches i think the deck overall performed very well uh i'm probably gonna let's go let's look back at the list actually i'm probably gonna cut this one main deck mind crush to the side and then just play like a sand game because i felt like in a couple of those game three games i just needed like one more starter you know just like one more it doesn't need to be a great starter but sand is probably the best one it's a dark monster it's got a decent effect you can revive it you can synchro with it it's a good way just toolbox into junk or Armageddon Knight or whatever Neospatian. So I think um, maybe going to switch it up to look more like this, like one card different from the version I showed at the beginning. But yeah, overall I was very pleased with how the deck performed, even if I wasn't always pleased with how I performed. <laughs> that tends to be the case here on the channel though. So yeah, let me know what you thought in the comments section. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Furthermore, if you enjoy my content, you should think about becoming a channel member. You get access to tons of bonus content, and it's a great way to help support the channel.